Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 273. 12, 12, 23. That'd be kind of cool next year, 12, 12, 24. Anyway, uh, it's the end of 2023. We're doing Wix online meeting, which means we're doing triage like we always do. But we have a few whips to cover because I'm gonna slide right in before the door slam shut on this year and get all my stuff in. All right, so if you're here, let's go ahead and say hi. We have three people in the chat, um, everything going on. And uh, since we don't have anything else, oh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here right now, but if you're watching this, you know that. And now you know that if you're here with us live. So let's go do the triage thing because that's where we're gonna spend most of the day. Bob, you ready? lovingly looking forward to the last triage of the year oh look at all that alliteration all right here we go um we have things that are still open i don't know why they're or closed but open or closed but uh triaged that's what it is um okay oh this was made a discussion okay so we probably can no. mark it not as triage yeah yeah. Do that. yeah be nice if the thing did a button automatically well, it's the auto labeling, I think. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, so this issue is probably because they didn't put the extension on the command line. All right, um, the ARP entry thing is still here. Uh, we were still mm, okay. Seven eight seven seven. Um, oh, there's been more discussion. I have not been paying attention. Yes. Um, all right. Quiet. Okay. Yeah, okay, so adding arguments, okay. All right, so <laughs> what's the issue, Bob, here? The... So, so you know, as, as we discussed last meeting, um, we thought, well, okay, what if there's um, All right. essentially a callback that, that would let you specify? Or, or sorry, another no, callback. No, just an override. An override. Um, yeah. And Nier pointed out that the last time we had this kind of discussion, it was about the launching of protected XEs. And we kind of took a, a semi-convoluted path in order to avoid having um, a BA be able to launch an elevated process um, without some kind of, of assurance that it you know, wasn't going to be used for ill intent. Um, which I, you know, I was sympathetic to that perspective um, because we're talking about letting you author something. Um, but that was our, our solution to the whole, you know, well, oh, we don't know what's going to be in the uninstall string. Oh, the full path of the uninstallers in the uninstall string. Right. Forgot oh, really? about, about that. Yeah. yeah. Duh, because we're not running the one out of the path. We may not be running. The uninstaller may not be the XE that we launched in the out of the cache. Oh, sure. okay. Fact, yeah, that's a all. pain now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then, but that was our response to the fact that we, you know, couldn't necessarily rely on just being able to add arguments to the non quiet uninstall string in order to make it silent. So we're kind of stuck there with an assumption that, well, we can just assume that it's going to work if you tack on, you know, dash s or whatever. Um, and I'm I'm basically okay with that if if you know there's an engine out there that that you know messes up that badly. I'm like, well, okay, you know, there's only so much burn can do, especially natively. Uh, you know, from, from authoring. Um, but then I'm like, oh, wait. Is there a, what I lovingly refer to as a little Bobby Tables problem of being able to specify arbitrary additional arguments on the command line? Are we opening ourselves up to the, I get a malicious bundle being able to maliciously execute some other engine and at that point i'm like uh there's too many too many ifs here for for me to come to a conclusion yeah i'm i'm not really worried about that 
case so much because you'd have to get elevated. I mean, you've already entered the, you're on the other side of the airlock already. Um, if exactly. those are problems there. Yep. So, so I understand now why it wanted to just add the ar arguments to the end, additional arguments to the end. because you wanted to use whatever was found in the uninstall string because it has right. the XE path. That's... At the very least, it has, it has the XE, which, you know, and frankly, we'd have to sit there and go, well, okay, if we wanted to specify the complete command line, then we'd at the very least have to hope that we can somehow locate, you know, do a file search for the uninstaller. I'm like, uh, yeah, that, that, that might be problematic. No, we we like no, we'd get more likely we'd get into the path of trying to pull the path out of the out of the uninstall string and then using it, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. that's not fun either cuz that's no. that's a pain in the <laughs> Mhm. Mm that's a real pain to do perfectly. Yeah. I understand now why it's the uninstall arguments. And it's not uninstall arguments in that case. It's additional uninstall arguments. Uh, yes. Add these to the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes more sense now. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to an extent, I just, I got to the point where I'm like, you know, this might not be able to be perfect. Um, but if we can cover, you know, the common cases with, you know, the the well-known engines that are out there that that use this approach, uh, okay, uh, you know, at the very least we have an eighty percent solution. I think actually it's more like a nine x percent solution. Um, it's I think really unlikely that we're going to come into a scenario that that we can't support with additional. Yeah, so this is really a whip to say, let's do, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't like that this is open as a bug. Um, all right. Yeah, okay, I guess we could look at it as additional uninstall arguments. That's not a bad way of looking at it. Yep. And then we probably should use additional uninstall arguments, whether it's quite uninstall string or uninstall string. Well. It's just, it's just additional uninstall arguments. Because, I mean, the XE package isn't going to write, like, you're going to tailor this based on what the XE is that you're uninstalling. Well, that, that is completely true. Yeah. So it, I could see you want to be able to add like, like a log switch during uninstall to overwrite it with the burn location. So you get your log file in the right place, mm -hmm. for example. And even in quiet uninstall, you would want to do that. But please, during quiet uninstall, write your log file to burn location. Ta-da! And that's great. So does that... I mean, there are two sets of additional arguments. No, there's or... just un there's just additional uninstall arguments as an attribute, and, and we use them in both. And we use it for quiet, quiet uninstall. Uninstall. And if quiet uninstall doesn't exist, we fall back to uninstall. So, so the the thing is, fall back to uninstall string if quiet isn't there because the current behavior we all agree is like, oh, that's pretty brutal. Well, so okay, so the the bit I was trying to get is that because you know what the, the XE that you're using writes to the uninstall key, you know whether you need uninstall string or quiet uninstall string. So I, I, I'm still not really happy with the idea of falling back automatically. Oh, why? I don't think, I mean, we shouldn't select. It's just be like, look, we're going to use a quiet uninstall string. And if for some reason you're uninstaller doesn't follow the standard out there that probably is not written down anywhere, but what everybody else does, then we'll fall back to uninstall string there. I mean, because otherwise we have to tell pe people have to like specify it and they're going to be like, whatever they're going to do. Humans will do the exact same thing. Is there, you know, just give me the one, go. Well, so the reason I didn't want automatic fallback is that I didn't want to end up in a state where we launch 
this XE elevated in you want about. So my original thinking was, if there's additional arguments, use them only for when you're falling back to uninstall string. Yeah, but that then prevents the log scenario that I was talking about. I, I understand. That's, so I think it's just easier just to say, look, you can have additional uninstall arguments. It's, I understand, but I'm saying if we automatically fall back, then if we automatically fall back, then we are potentially launching an elevated UI process. Yeah. So I, I wanted us to not fall back automatically. I wanted you to specify if you wanted, because again, you know what you're uninstalling, so you should you should pick. I worry about the automatic un, or the automatic fallback, um, and that I was using the additional arguments as the the opt in. I don't think we should override or overload that concept. I think that uh, concept should fine. stand on its own. Okay. Like, well, there's, there's two uh, features uh, here. I, I, I think I there should be two features here. <laughs> like, is not considering the idea of of always using additional arguments. Right, right, right. The log thing is like, uh, okay, sure, fine. And I think that you, I agree, that's the additional feature. Yeah, that's an additional feature. And then there's the, and when, and the ability then to somehow get, if there's no quiet uninstall string, to go to uninstall string. Well, okay. I'm, I'm saying, I'm suggesting we should not do that. I'm suggesting it should be authored which one you get. And the default is quite uninstall string. And if there isn't yes. one, then it fails and people will be like, oh, my uninstall didn't work. Oh, I have to specify that I want the, the one that's not quiet. Um, yes, because again, you're the bundle author, you know what engine you're using and what it provides. Right. That's why I don't think we should fall back. So what's the name of the attribute? Then, um, uh, well, see, that's why I overloaded it because I didn't want to have to solve that problem. Yeah, no, naming I, is hard. Yeah, no, overloading it is not, not the answer either. Um, <laughs> yeah, need an attribute name for that. Use uninstall string. Yeah, I guess. Right? I mean, something like yeah. All right, we could also go with an enum like that. Can you also get it? You could do uninstall string, and the default is quiet, and then the you have to specify if you want to go noisy, go loud. I don't know what I. That was just another option I was thinking through. Is it an enum? I can't think of another value though. I know. I was trying to think. Is there ever a third okay. option here? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Uh, probably not. Sometimes an enum helps name things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, a lot of people be like, use uninstall stream. Like, well, yeah, that's what I want, and they'll always set it to true, even though they really want the quiet one. That's what I worry about, right? We always get into this when we name something, and people are like, oh yeah, I want that one. It's like, no. If you make it an enum and the one's quiet, you're like, yeah, I want quiet. Great, there you go. There, you have fallen in the right direction. And then, in the rare case that an uninstaller doesn't have a quiet uninstall string, you have to do a little work to switch to uninstall string. I, I don't have better answers off the top of my head. Yeah, all right. I I think that's I think that's generally the way to go. I really don't like that the X is in that stream, but yeah, that that makes sense. That's just kind of stuck there. Well, I, the alternative is to is to figure that out. Yeah, I really don't want to do that. That's I, just <laughs> yeah. that's all kinds of runtime bugs, and they're all our bugs. Then it's like, well, you guys didn't parse right. this string right. You're like, oh god, who fine? Oh, well, you didn't handle this one. Like, oh, there's just Path parsing is such a pain, so uh, I'd rather not <laughs> be involved in that in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, that's probably the answer. Is add two attributes, uninstall, additional uninstall arguments on the ARP entry, and then some way of specifying not to use the quiet string. Okay, I think that's the two things. And we just have to figure out the attribute name for that. Okay. Just sit and think about that.
Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Seven, eight, eight, nine. Wix cop upgrade leaves destination long name. Oh, that's sad. Not supposed to do that. Copy file was missed in all of the conversions. Probably shouldn't. That's really strange. That's really strange. I was, I'm surprised three didn't complain about destination line. All right, well, fine. Yeah, actually, yeah. right, right. Yeah, that's fine. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah, Some, someone could fix that. Cool. Be a good thing to have fixed. So up for grabs. Someone could take that. Um, seven, eight, nine, six. Uh, I, all these dashes for locale identification. And I'm I'm really confused. I thought that's what we used. What? Uh, yeah, more or less. Um, I mean, I don't understand. What's the request? It's shown in this format. Okay, this format. So, yeah, I, the biggest yeah. example is is in the the case of three. Um. Yeah. Yeah. There. We don't we don't break down the the three one six six one, which is more of the the region that in in the simplified case is handled by the second field. Um, yeah. Okay. Except it's yeah. It's a it's. I don't unusual. care. I don't, but I, also, it's not how it's not how Windows or no, .NET deals with. No, I know that's what, like I don't care. Not, like whatever, sure. If someone wants to go do the work, we we entertain it. But you have to think about the backwards compatibility of this, so that's gonna be a fun part too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah, that. And .NET's gonna have to be able to translate that to a code page. So. Well, yeah. Code that, I, I mean, that's the whole part about C sharp, right? Because these things have to turn into code pages inside MSI. They just do. Right. So yeah, that's the right. hard part. So anyway, um, I don't. I don't understand what the value is. Like we're following. Well, it's 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 certainly not for, you know, the localizations that that come with Wix, um, which you know are basically like number five and number six. In the example, I think we have both of those. In oh, language I see. Five. And ours are like, is that the SW? Uh, where are those? SW? I saw one. I don't I Z H H K C N T W kind of thing. I assume it's these guys down here. Anyway. Yeah, I, yeah. I... I have okay. to go back and look. These are the ones that are providing wish right. Okay, I, I don't care. Like, no, no, I don't care. You can do you you can use these going forward. This is a backwards compatibility issue. This is what it was from before from old.net. Nobody cares, right? Like it's just like fine. Well, I don't even know if current.net supports the, I the three think, fields. I think I like think it this. does. I think it does. Okay. So but they could drop it in and be like, great, start doing that. Fantastic. If you start localizing, putting these in there, that'd be great. But if you're not localizing the stuff, then I don't care. <laughs> it's basically what it comes down to. So, um, yeah. And and these are kind of stuck for backwards compatibility. If we change these, we break all kinds of stuff. So we'd have to write translations for it. So yeah, I assume. I don't. I don't know what the. I don't know if, if dot that handles it. It's like the three parts already work. Culture like, info layer. This one works here so I, i've seen threes popping up and i'm like yeah that's fine so point. it's like yeah this is our legacy one here that probably translates into a three part now most normally it's like fine so anyway i don't i don't care unless he's willing to go through and start providing localizations in the new locales which would be great if they did that'd be fantastic we're not changing the ones that we have for back but the the cost for changing them well, has no value here. Also, I, I I don't know any of 
these other languages. No. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess with what's there. Yeah. Right. Well, like I said, if they want to come through and localize it, be like, hey, look, I fixed these. So that's great. But if if .NET understands the new ones, then it's just it just works for, yeah. for your own stuff. For your own stuff, definitely. And and if you want to fix Wish UI, then you have to go up with the backwards compatibility thing too, or what we do there. Yeah, because that's that's honestly the hardest part. Well, if you can speak the language, this is the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> is is coming up with backspace? Don't care. Uh, so this should work now, and but this is all about updating Wish UI. It's like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. I don't even get that. But it's okay, right here. I, yeah, I, I, it's found that these its own set of ideas like, like that, and it's like, yeah, we're using the .NET ones. It's not our own. We didn't make it up. Right, right, right. right. It's just I think it's old <laughs> and out of flavor. I'm like, that's fine. I don't care. It's just no, like. I don't know what to do here. All right. Let's mark it up for grabs. And whoever wants to do this has to solve the backwards compatibility problem. We should put that in here. This has a back updating these to more modern um, language formats has a backwards compatibility problem that would need to be solved. And we could solve that. And they would need to yeah. solve that. That's fair. So that's the upper grabs. And nobody's going to care because all of this is like, I would prefer you did it this way, the way this is all. Just no offer to help. It's like, yeah, fine. We don't speak those languages anyway. We're dependent on other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to give it to us in the first place. Painter says he wants to look at the conversion bug. If you want the attribute converted or if you want to throw an error in the... If it, it should be converted. If it can be converted... I think, yeah. It should be converted. I'd have to go... I haven't looked at copy file in a long time. Just convert it to the correct answer, whatever the right answer is. Um, that should Probably be convertible. Probably the thing, right? I think it's just name. Yeah, destination name. Like I don't know. It should be easy to convert. It should be converted if it can be converted. It should be an error when we can't convert it safely. For example, one of the cool things um, that I think I've solved is the, I think I'm going to be able to resolve that error about targeter, the whole directory ref on targeter. I think I have a solution to that, but it's not in the converter. It's actually in the core tool set. I think I fixed the core tool set so that converter error is going to be able to go away. And that's kind of cool. But this this should be a conversion. You should be able to convert whatever the correct answer is. I mean, the warning tells you what the... If this attribute is deprecated, there should be another attribute that should be used instead. Should be able to work no problem. All right. 7897. Unauthorized exception with validator. Okay. So the validator is stuck. And... The only, the only place where that string is used is in the mutex name. So okay. that's like bizarre. I wish they gave us a, is this a, did they really like cut it off? Well, there's, yeah, they do any, they don't, don't actually reproduce the error in the text, just in the title. Ah, but there was a call stack that goes with this. Dang it. I really wish. Mm, the, call. The, call, the call stacks are sometimes hard can't get them from Visual Studio. You I know. I wish a little you... deeper to get them from event yeah, log. Annoying. The event log shouldn't list any installations when activate the build computer. Well, that's wrong. Well, this is a separate. Yeah, separate. that's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. You. That's not how validation works. <laughs> and that's not our design. That's the installer's design. Um, um, all right, cool. Ask, let's do a more info on this one and ask for the call stack that they saw. And then we'll go from there. Okay. And... Because with the call stack, it'll be easy to find the try catch that's missing. And it's going to be a try catch that says, oh, catch this, print out a message. Validation failed because of some well, message. There, there, is, uh, there is no try catch. Again, there's only one place where that string is used uh, okay. in creating a mutex. So we should, I guess, okay. have the try catch. But I don't know what the problem is because it's a mutex. I don't know. I mean, why would... Trying to acquire a mutex fail with. It's, sorry, it's not even acquiring the mutex. It's creating an instance of the mutex object. The acquisition is separate. Uh, interest of the Wix validator. Okay, interesting. Okay. It might just have to be like a retry. Access to the path Wix validator. That's a really strange error message. Right. right. I really wish we had the whole call stack. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. Need to put something in this Wix 001 message that says, 
internal case. Please provide the call stack message printed somewhere, blah, 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 and then give this message. <laughs> I don't know. Something so people give us more information on these in the case that they do happen. Uh, is this a is this a place where we need to squish the stack trace? I guess so that, that it shows uh, up as one line. It's really not, ugly, but it is terribly ugly. But at least we'd get it then, right? Yeah. Maybe that's the thing. So anyway, yep, they have a problem validation on this machine. That can happen for all those reasons that it can happen. All right, maybe we lost an error message from three to four. Interesting. Uh, I don't know. I, I've I've never. But they I haven't can't. seen it in Wix three. That's really. Sh I don't know, man. I don't. All right. Unless Wix three, did we do something different in Wix three? Was there? Did we have a retry loop that? Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember a retry loop, but maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the issue with this. Cool. Yep. Uh, we mark that up for grabs until maybe if we get a. Stack trace, look at it. But it's uh, like, I'll, I'd give them a meeting to come back with the stack sure. trace. All right. Uh, 7910 is closed, probably because it was transferred to a discussion. Yep. Yep. All right. So we don't have to mark that triage. Problem yeah. launching Wix exec, shell exec. I saw this. Expected result. When you have no expected result, you probably have a question. When your actual result ends in a question mark, you probably have a question, not in a bug report. Need to figure out how to tell people that. If you're using a question mark in here, you probably should be asking a question, not opening a bug report. It's really what it should comes down to. Anyway, mark those a triage. All right, shrink this up a little bit. All right, I think we're done with triage of the systems, which because we're down now to the issues that I have self-assigned myself, which are whips. None of these are going to be surprising. That's why I don't think we're going to spend a terrible lot of time on these. Um, I wanted to get them here and kind of walk through them so people knew they were coming um, because, well, these are the big things that I've been working on and I'm finally getting to the end of the time and they're all going to get squished at the end. So uh, 7913, virtual symbols. We've talked about these. This is just a whip. I have played around with these quite a bit and they are working as well as I hope they would, which is great. Uh, there's not a lot more to this. We don't, I mean, honestly, a lot of people should not be creating virtual symbols. It's an advanced feature. It's for building your own library, reusable libraries. So we will probably use this more and more. Um, we'll definitely use it in the standard library, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then we might start using it more and more in our other libraries um, to do th things that we could not do where we're trying to make things overridable. Um, but this is not a general purpose. Oh, let me go make my stuff virtual. Don't do that. <laughs> like Chances are you're going to make a mess of things. Um, you really have to be building reusable constructs for you to be using that. Anyway, so that's what it is. Um, and I call out here. This is the one consideration I want to call out. Well, all right. So it's an advanced feature. That's what I was just saying there. And then also Mix 5, we're not putting any restrictions on where things can be virtual. But I am a little worried that people could put virtual in really strange places and cause really strange behaviors um, that I can't imagine right now um, that could really blow things up. So we may in the future have to make things, some things not allowed to be virtual. I hope that's not true, but it may be true. And I'm calling that out here just in case people uh, start trying to abuse this feature, finding all kinds of problems that we then lock down, just kind of leaving that here as a... Um, uh, a potential for the future. But uh, I don't know if there's a lot of questions. We've talked about this feature in in specific cases before. Just kind of wrote down the whip because I want to have a whip for it. Honestly, I was like, this is big enough. We should have a whip. So there we go. That's virtual symbols. Why do we have virtual symbols? Why do we have this thing that I just talked about? We have them for the Wix standard library. Wix standard library is a very cool thing. Um, the more I got into the Wix standard library and uh, making it work inside Wix, the more I realized it was going to fix areas of the code that I don't like. 
<laughs> I was like, I really don't like this code. Oh, Wix Standard Library solves that. And a lot of it came down to it always felt like we're doing it the wrong way. And Wix Standard Library allows us to come up with a standard way of doing it, um, of bringing in well-known symbols and bringing them. But to do so, we needed the concept that was overridable, but to make it more general because of the things that Bob has talked about with his various default symbols that he's bringing into the world, like default feature and um, major upgrade and things like that, needed a place to be able to define symbols and make them overridable. So now we have that place, which is the Wix Standard Library. For most people, the Wix Standard Library is completely invisible. They will never know that it's there except when they get error messages that refer to a symbol coming from Wix Standard Wix Lib, like program files folder or something like that. The source for program files folder will move from nowhere, which is location before had no source, to now being say, hey, I came from the Wix Standard Wixlib, which is also a bonus. Your error messages will no longer say, should you have an error that hit one of the well-known actions or directories, they used to have no source line number. So you just get no information, just be like, this is wrong. Um, now at least you'll be told this came from the Wix Standard Wixlib. So you can then start tracking down usually when you'll see these now will be conflicts it's like oh i defy program files folder over here and i'm also getting it from the standard library um you know i'll have to uh, do an override at this point um anyway so uh it's cool it's very nice to have this i think it will clean up a bunch of our error messages um i've as i point out i wish we would have thought of this feature a very long 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 time ago um, so the one thing to call out is that as I was imagining this feature all the way up until the point at which I finally got into, um, the virtual symbols working well enough that I could try to create a standard lib, um, I thought that there would be a Wix lib binary, a Wix lib that was the Wix standard Wix lib, because it is. Um, and then I had the problem where I'm like, oh, well, I don't really want this file floating around on disk, another file that you have to copy around with it. So I'm like, ah, I can embed it in a stream the same way Wix extensions embed their libraries. Um, and then I realized that, well, if I'm going to put this in one of the assemblies that are probably in Wix core or maybe Wix data, kind of went back and forth, I need to be able to build <laughs> the Wix lib but then I need the tools built to build the Wix lib, but then I need to have the Wix lib embedded in the tools. So I got in this whole chicken and egg problem. And uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized um, that I didn't actually need a Wix lib and there's no benefit to having it be a Wix lib on disk ever, ever being a resource stream ever. And that since we already had a bunch of places where we had hard coded symbols for the standard stuff like directories and actions, like we'd already done that, I could just, uh, hard code the standard lib as a encode. So now there is the there will be a Wix standard library that is a class that you get the standard lib out of. So you ask for the standard library, which is what it was going to be anyway. You weren't going to like do a whole stream and pull it out of a DLL. That was not a good abstraction anyway. Now, whenever you say, give me the Wix standard library, it just gives you the library in the objects, which it was going to be anyway, just create those objects when you ask for it. So um, I only call that out because I found that detail interesting. Um, I don't think anybody will ever notice. Like I said, this is invisible to everybody. Um, although if you want to build your own standard lib, you can do so and we'll have a no standard lib switch and then you can provide your own if there was some reason that you want to be able to do that. Again, this is like some super duper advanced feature. I don't know why you'd not want to use the Wix standard library, um, but we may at some point in time grow it to the point where you're like, I want to have my own way of doing this and customize it um, your own and you'll be able to do that. So just like CC++, you can provide your own standard lib. So that's the Wix standard library. Uh, again, this is a mostly invisible feature that enables a lot of the default stuff that um, Bob has been talking about for six months. Um, and it will be, it's very, very cool for when you're deep inside Wix. Otherwise it will be invisible. You'll never even know it's there kind of feature. So all my features are invisible and I'm fine with that. Uh, except for this last one, bootstrapper application processes. So uh, this whip is not complete. I need to do a little bit more work at the end, but I just haven't figured out the API that I'm gonna put. I will be adding to the end of this. Um, again, this isn't gonna be surprising anybody. I've been talking about this for a while, but um, 
uh, for posterity's sake. Bootstrap applications have historically been DLLs that have been loaded in the burn process. We did this originally because the goal was to get them loaded into the burn process, the user double clicked on, extract them and load them as quickly as possible. Not creating another process, not doing a whole lot of work, trying to get that UI visible as fast as possible. Um, that got thrown out with the clean room, which was a security fix a feature. So now we end up loading another burn process that loads your UI all out of proc every time. So all of that speed that you know we had been trying to do, we'd already tossed out for security sake. And that's the way it always is. And once you do that, if you stop and think for a while, you're like, wait, if we're already launching another process, why don't we just let the bootstrap application be a process instead of being hosted inside burn? And then we can give bootstrap applications a library that they can use to talk to burn. And then when we do that, burn is no longer in the mix of the bootstrap application running and having to get its UI visible and its message loop or how you do any of that nonsense, just get out of all of that problems, um, particularly around threading and all kinds of other goofy things that you can get into with burn hosting you instead of yours, all that, just we're done with all that. And instead you call a library and you will pass it the command line that your process got because burn will launch the blue shop application with a process with a command line. You will take that command line as is feed it into the library, and then the library will know, oh, I am this kind of uh, bundle, I'm running an install, uninstall, all that kind of good stuff, and it will hook up to the burn process that is running, um, and then everything else in your bootstrap application will honestly be mostly the same, except you'll own your, um, your message loop and all those other problems that we created by trying to host it in burn instead of just doing that. So, um, so that's uh, the big change there. Um, I've done a lot of thinking about, spent a lot of time thinking about the protocol between the bootstrap application process and burn, thinking about ways of simplifying it or making it more readable. Uh, so if you want to write it in a process where we don't provide you a library that works for you, um, you could, you know, communicate that, uh, you communicate to the burn process. I've decided that in Wix 5 to not do a lot of work in that because I don't really know even what I'm building it for um, or that it'll be useful and all that. So I'm going to keep the wire protocol the same as it is today um, and the library will abstract all this. This is only interesting for people that are thinking about writing in a language where we don't provide a, a DLL or uh, that you can use. So we're gonna to continue to provide DLL and a managed assembly that your process could use. But if you wanna write your BA in Lua <laughs> and you can't host our native DLL or you can't get you know whatever the Lua p invoke is into native DLLs, if that doesn't work, then you'd have to write this low level protocol between burn to write in Lua. Again, I don't know who's gonna do any of that. So it'll be a bit before we see those things. So that's just the one little detail that I was like, I'm just going to keep with the current burn protocol, mostly because that's all well tested. It all exists and can be reused in the new library that gets hosted in the Bootstrap application process. So, so when you say existing, the wire protocol is going to be the existing structs. Correct. I am not okay. changing that wire protocol. So the, the thing is that like in the end, things like MBA native um, are the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, they exist exactly the same. They just talk over a pipe to get to the other side. Um, so a lot of that code ends up being reused underneath and it's just getting it hosted slightly different. Um, but underneath it's all the same. Uh, sorry, from the burn point of view, it looks a lot the same. Uh, yeah, right, from the right. outside, it's now a DLL that you're talking into and you will get events out of. So that'll be very similar, except now you own the message pump instead of having been dealing with hosting your message pump inside a burn process that was trying to figure out if it had a message pump and all the other kind of junk. So there'll be that. Um, but this DLL that we provide will abstract it away for anybody that's written these. So, um, and Wix standard BA will be updated to, so like net net Wix standard BA that you know well um, will no longer be a DLL. It'll be an XE now. Otherwise, it's not much changed. <laughs> the interesting thing is it doesn't end up changing a lot. 
underneath. So, um, and the hope is that it unlocks people to get their own Bootstrap applications written their own ways. So that's that. That's this one. And I will add to this the API. I, I'm I'm in the bits and mix of this, and I just chose not to start putting the bits and pieces I've hacked in here because I don't think the API that I've hacked together so far is anywhere near the right answer. Um, or not near. It, it's near, it's just not the right answer, so I didn't put it in here. Um, so it will be, I will grow this to put that in there with the, with the name of DLL is. That's at least half of the purpose of a whip, so I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is Bootstrap application processes instead of being host in Burnixy. And that's it. These are the things I'm working on for the next couple weeks. Cool. Very cool. Going back, we can do questions and comments, things that people want to talk about. Um, I hope virus scanners don't get freaked out over the next sexy. They they won't get any more um, freaked out than they do now because Burns already extracting XCs and copying them around and things like that. So it's you'll still have to sign it. You'll still have to do all those things to make it work. So it's those are all the same. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I might say it's even going to be a little bit better, um, just because it's an XE. There's no weirdness that um, about loading another DLL. Yeah, the only tricky part is that we are launching an XE, so um, yeah. we've sorry, extracting and launching an XE, but we already do that, so right. <laughs> it's just, yeah, that's true. This process looks like a virus thing. I'm like, yes, we do, but we're also that's because that's because viruses look like installers. So, yeah. and XE created an execute. Yeah, but that's the whole purpose of burn is to extract and <laughs> execute processes. So it does that a lot, and now it's just going to do one more. <laughs> it's just it's we're doing the same thing we do. So yeah, um, Christopher asked about this PR. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, we can I haven't thought deeply about this PR. This PR threw me a little bit that we still need three five, and then you mentioned that's because DTF still runs on two. So I'm thinking about just bringing DTF up to the minimum supported .NET framework, and then we won't have that .NET three five. Because I don't want didn't realize that we need three five to build four. That's kind of weird. Um, so I'm thinking about getting rid of that. So before I look at this, I was look at that. I guess is why this PR. I didn't do anything with this PR yet. That's that. So it's the build time requirement, not a runtime, or sorry, build time of Wix requirement. Correct. Correct. So if we just retargeted DTF to Wix f to .NET 4, 7, 2? I mean, is 6 even in the mix anymore? I think it's out of service, right? I think, no, 462 is still alive. Fine. So target 462, and now we don't need .NET 3.5 installed right. anymore. So Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah, it just like we kept it .NET two because it was, <laughs> right? But right. just make it. But that's not a real thing anymore. So um, just move to a supported .NET framework, and then we do that. Yep, totally, totally, totally. So yeah, then we can look at pulling that in. So, um, and, and you know, think about this, like. I assume the answer is no, but I mean, we could update Wix 5 to .NET 8 if we wanted, but we can also leave it on 6 and just keep rolling forward like we do. I don't know if any people had any strong opinions either way on that. Because hmm. .NET 6 will go out of service next year. Yeah. But Wix 5 should be out next year, so, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. We're still, we still have the problem of running on .NET Framework. So yep. Yep. a later version of .NET Core will not let us take advantage of the C Sharp features. No, it will not. Not until we cut MS Build land, so whatever. Theoretically, we could do that, though. I mean, and just build the tasks with, you know, targeting whatever, 462 or whatever. Yes. Yeah, so there, there is definitely a place that we could stop building 
Wix, but then we would require a .NET core on the machine where by building Wix oh, .NET framework, right. we, you can yeah. work on a f machine that doesn't have .NET core on it that only has .NET framework on it. You're right, you're right. We've now, had this discussion. Exactly. I don't know how, how real that is anymore, but it's true. Probably the CMake guys or something. I don't know. The CMake guys are probably using Wix.exe now. No, they're still using Candle. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, the whole thing, I don't know. So the, the dependencies there. This is why in Wix 6, we have to add Wix telemetry so we can start figuring out who's using what and actually know what we can cut <laughs> or something. I don't know. I don't know how yeah. we'll know. I don't know how we'll know. Yeah. No, it's a, it is interesting. I mean, the 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 framework problem um, is a real thing. You know, we 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 could cut a lot if like we could cut our build time down. A lot of things could get better. Especially, I mean, the Wix build, the Wix, the core build is hard because of trying to build .NET Core and .NET Framework and getting them all polished all right. I mean, it's a lot more right, complicated right. than it should be, needs to be, yeah, could be. So, I don't know. Well, you painful. said the magic words, faster build. I know, I know that's a that's a pet peeve of yours, but like that publishing is, a lot of that in there is just right. trying to get all this stuff worked out to do. Um, well, it, it, I'd kind of forgotten that we, we did, um, that that we did so many dual builds, so many target target frameworks, mm -hmm. but a lot of them we do that for a lot of of components. Mm -hmm. And it won't get us out of everything, of course. Like a lot of our libraries still no. have to be dual targeted, but I don't know. Okay, to put a last validated on X Y Z date using VS. No, that's what the whole VS whatever says. I don't know. Do we need to? I don't know. I, I mean, oh, last validated. I guess we could put a like the prerequisites last validated date. I don't know. I guess. I mean, but are we actually going to change it? Like, are we going to update that? I guess we could. What does it say that says, "Hey, we did this at this time." I mean, if you're if you're using a different version, it might be different. Yeah. So I mean, that says just remove out the or higher part of here. Visual Studio, this version. I mean, it doesn't help. Visual Studio keeps changing. It keeps breaking things. I don't know what we're... I don't know what to do there. <laughs> they just do. I don't know what it does for us. Because it's going to be out of date as soon as we check it in. It's going to be like, hey, this date. Yeah, I know. They're always changing things and breaking things and changing things and breaking things. That's the world today, it seems. We've gone from stable software to always changing stuff. So you're just always... Every update, you got to be prepared for being broken. Although at least people are starting to get used to that now. I updated. You're broken. Yeah, well, that's not my problem. It's yours. Kind of thing. But, yeah. Well, the biggest problem is that people are... I know I, I was not expecting, for example, Visual Studio 17.8 to break the Wix bill. But 17.8 is when .NET 8 came out. Yeah. And so there's kind of a an implicit... Yeah, stuff's going to change. Well, that .NET 8 problem is the reason that I'm doing the burn Bootstrap application yeah. process in 5. Right, right, exactly. Because we have a dependency on a feature that the .NET team doesn't care about, and yeah. they broke us along the line of it, and they would say, we don't care about that feature. Of course you're broken. So that's a pain. Are Spectre libs going to be used? I don't remember where we end up with Spectre. I forgot if we're using those or not. I don't remember. I think we are. Yeah. They're not. Basic. Usually, setup code is not in the, you know, path of Spectre. Yeah, we're not the space that that's a problem. I guess. All right. All right, Painter keeps asking questions, I'll give him a chance to catch up. Two weeks is December 26th. I'm going to guess we're not doing a meeting on 26th. I think that's a good call. All right. So if you're like, yeah, I don't think so, then if you're like, no, no, I'll be here, then I'll be like, all right, well, I'll show up. Um, all right. So not 26th. Do we just slip it a week, go to the second? Um, everybody, I mean, that's the day after the New Year's Day, not the day after the New Year. 
So maybe better. Um, the second. Yeah, I think that's fine. You know, start up the new year. Yeah, week one of the of the new year. Yeah, week one of the new year. I mean, just kind of slide up because otherwise, you know, we're starting the ninth, and that just feels I don't know, it feels later than it needs to be. So, yeah. All right. So I think we'll look at the second January second. Cool. All right. Other questions? Things? Didn't know if you wanted it to. Didn't know if you wanted it to. Hmm. Spectre just slows things down. So if you don't need it, you don't. Well, and at one point I looked at it and there were, there were problems. Oh, I think it's, it's infectious. Oh, everything so has to be Spectre? So if you need... Um, yeah. So if we'd have to build... We could not build... The library, the native libraries with Spectre, mm. or we'd have to multi-target. Yeah, it's not a request. We're not adding it, so we're definitely not running on a multi-tenant machine, virtual machine, where people are trying to spy across <laughs> our, our our different um, contexts, uh, isolation boundaries, boundaries, whatever those are. Yeah, and hopefully not a long running <laughs> process. <laughs> All right. Well, and Microsoft keeps, you know, disabling, you know, they stop supporting hardware that doesn't have built in spectrum mitigation. So, oh, really? I missed that. That was part of Windows 11. Oh, I, I just heard the they... TPM thing. I missed the fact that they were like, and now you have to be anti spectre as well, huh? Hmm. Well, yeah, they, they, um, what was it? They bumped. The Intel requirements to pretty sure eighth generation, which I think had the beginnings of spectrum mitigation and hardware. Interesting. And then there's gonna be Windows 12. No, wait, maybe no Windows 12. All right, whatever. Maybe, maybe, or not, or not. It's just gonna be Windows 11 again. Well, um, Windows 10 still has 63 percent of the market. 63. Yeah, it's pretty high. Good for it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, if you you happen to be running an older CPU, you don't have a lot of choice. Yeah, that's the problem, right? You're just trapped on Windows 10. Yep. That's the then end of the line. 18 months from now, you're... What do you do? Desperate. Like, you, you throw the computer out? You, oh, you put Linux on it. That's well, what you do. Or you throw it out, yeah. I, I mean, you can't run Mac on it. So Linux it is. The only other operating system out there that's available. Wow. That's fascinating. Non-TPM machines all become Linux machines. Interesting. I bring this up because I think I have a couple of machines that have no TPMs in them. And uh, they, are, yeah. they are perfectly good machines, right? They are overpowered yeah. for that which they are doing right now. The problem is I put Linux on them. They, I might be the only one that can use them. <laughs> my kids will well, be like, what do I do with this now? Or maybe make uh, my kids no. hackers. That will be great. Yeah, I was going to say, your kids will be just fine. Well, I don't know. Do they have Rocket League on Linux? No, uh, these are older machines. These are these are first gen fire giant machines. So that's thirteen, ten plus years ago. Yeah, that I a lot of, like that's the problem. A lot of them are just that old, but they run great. But they run because they were high end machines know, back then. Yeah, ten yeah, years, no problem. They, they run don't great. Wear out. Yeah, quite so much mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah, and Perfect. Rocket League doesn't need a high end graphics card. It turns out. Now they're just chess. Although they probably can play chess on Linux. Yeah, so yeah. That'll probably work out. But Rocket League might be the problem. That might be the one I hear about. Mm. Mm. All right. Well. All right. Well, I guess that's it. We will be back in three weeks, which is a little bit unusual. Three weeks, but that'll be the new year. Uh, after the holidays, all that kind of good stuff. Fun things coming in. And, um, yeah, that's it. Three weeks from now, right? Right? Yep. Uh, features, getting those in, like I am. Got to get those in if they're going to get in. Uh, right, because we'll have our meeting three days before the uh, deadline for yeah. Wix 5 Preview 1. Yeah, and, you know, we can move it a little bit if we want. Like, I put that in a you know, line in the sand a long time ago. <laughs> Um, 
to see how things kind of went. Um, and the fifth sounded reasonable, but we might, we can move it a week or two or whatever, but we will definitely next meeting be talking about RCs and what we think we need from this point going out. Um, and a lot of that is based on, well, given the changes we made, how many RCs do we think we really need to kick out all the bugs out of this, right? So um, we're gonna have those conversations again in the next meeting. That's what's coming to us in the next meeting. So yep. um, fun times ahead. I know you are all excited because talking about RCs was always fun. Although to be fair, it always does kind of feel like not a death march, but a march towards the end. Like here we are, new stuff is coming. Ta-da, here it is. So and well, I know- it- it will be interesting to have that discussion based on what we found during Wix 4. And mm, you know, that's to it. talk about how much of that is still true in Wix 5, which, you know, we're talking about coming out a year after Wix 4 compared to, you know, <clears throat> um, Wix 4. As I recall, it was slightly more than a year between Wix 3 and Wix 4. Wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? A year? Huh? No, wait, what? We, during Wix 4, we found a lot of people that found bugs only after RTM because uh, they don't they okay. look at, at an RC. Because they don't look at RCs. Got it. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I, I got hung up on there was only a year between Wix 3 and Wix 4, and I was like, no. That might have been a bit of hyperbole. <laughs> okay. Um, to make the point that you know, Wix five is is very different, right? Yes. The and also the f- time, features we're the, doing at Wix five, the 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 fact that we didn't rewrite the entire build system onto a whole new build system that didn't exist when Wix four started, when et cetera. We, uh, yep. Yeah, like, those are all massive, massive changes. Yeah. Um, I also, also Wix expect five right now is is going to be backward compatible at the source level. And Wix and we have tests that we didn't have last time. Absolutely. And I think the features, like all the features I'm doing, I've added tests for the new stuff and I lean heavily on the existing tests. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And the burn work, I'm really hoping there's no change. Like the tests just do the same thing they did before and they just work as is. Right. So uh, it's all a big thing that I'm curious to see how, you know, what we do there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much testing we need. Um, I guess is what it really comes down to. So. Well, and I'm mostly thinking of the psychological uh, approach. You know, how many RCs do we want to put out if historically we don't get a lot of feedback? Right. Is this you know is this a scenario where like Microsoft killing off the S that sorry killing off the S that role? <laughs> I was going to say. Kill off the yep. the test, many, many of the testers are still alive and well. <laughs> um, but, you know, there was an implicit you know, reliance on developers to do their own testing. And we took that to heart in Wix 4. Are we going to take it to heart in, in Wix 5 and just say, well, the, the idea of, of stringing out a release in order to get people to look at it did not work very well in Wix 4. Will it work better in Wix 5? Maybe, and that's worth the discussion. Yeah, I don't know. We, we got a set of bugs in the first couple of RCs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, sorry, I'm not, not at all. You're saying R- RC4, RC maybe had less value than RC1, RC2 did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. RC is, is a pretty special thing. Yeah. You know, that, that will get some attention, but. Yep. All right. We'll be talking about this in detail as opposed to just early thoughts that Bob and I haven't even compared notes on um, in three weeks. So January 2nd, 9.30 again. We'll keep doing this. We'll be back. All of you have a wonderful Christmas, a happy new year. Be safe. Do all kinds of fun things. Have a good time with your family. I know I will. And we'll see you guys in the new year. Bye. Bye.